We're now joined by Tom French, Policy Coordinator of the Equality Network, and John Deegan, Parliamentary Officer of the Catholic Church in Scotland. Um, Tom, you've hit out at this delay, but isn't it right they should consider this complex issue before rushing to a conclusion? Absolutely. I think there should be a very thoughtful consideration of the evidence on this. Um, of course, it has been almost a year now since the consultation uh, began. Uh, it's been seven months since the Scottish Government consultation ended. Uh, and we do think that seven months, with all the delays there have been, is probably long enough. I think people will be disappointed today, but they won't be disappointed because the Scottish Government haven't made their announcement on a particular day of the week. They will be disappointed because this is a really important issue. And what matters more than anything is we see some leadership from the Scottish Government. We see a commitment from them that they're dedicated to LGBT equality. And what we haven't seen so far throughout this whole debate is actually the positive case from the Scottish Government. Do they believe in equal marriage and why do they want to introduce equal marriage? So we hope they will get that message out and soon. John, do you see an opportunity in this delay to press your case? I think we've pressed the case. I think the, the implications are profound. I think the Scottish Government are probably aware of that. And I, I, I think uh, the delay could mean that uh, they're wakening up to the fact that they cannot uh, give the assurances, they cannot ensure that, that the freedom of conscience is respected throughout society, they cannot ensure that Catholic organisations, Christian organisations, Muslim organisations are protected. So I, I think that they have a, 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 tough, a tough challenge. Uh, I think they will have to recognise that they need Westminster to provide those assurances and uh, I really don't think they can proceed. What's clear, though, is that there will be no referendum and the SNPs will get a free vote, so it yeah. is likely that it will go through. Well, it won't go through if they don't, if they don't um, commence that, that procedure. You know, and I think the, the, the opinion polls you've quoted, uh, for ex example, um, are, are one side of the story. We've tried um, polls uh, and we've consistently found that most people want to keep uh, marriage defined as between a man and a woman. I think the government will be aware of that. Uh, I don't think... That support um, is broadly there in society to change it as as is as presented. Uh, if 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 it were what we've been told by, by by Tom and others, such wise support, I think they would have been happy to have a referendum. I think I think the fact that running away from that suggests that they know most of society would be happy to keep marriage as it is. Were, were you running away from a referendum? Well, look, you know, I was involved in setting up the Equal Marriage Campaign with the Equality Network back in 2008. And I think it's really important to say that we set up the campaign because we wanted a positive change. We didn't set up the equal marriage campaign because we wanted to have an argument with John or a tit for tat or because we wanted to force the Catholic Church or any other body to do something that they don't want to do. You know, for us this is about equality and freedom. We're not running away from a referendum. I just... <laughs> I don't think it's actually the right way to deal with these issues. That's why referendums are only used for major constitutional issues of change. Something like this, with 77,000 responses to the Scottish Government consultation, requires MSPs to sit, look through the detailed evidence, look at both sides of the argument, and hopefully make a really thoughtful uh, conclusion on that. Uh, John, the majority of people appear to want this. A man to be able to marry a man, a woman to be able to marry a woman. It's just some religious groups that appear to be against it. Well, that's not the case. I mean, the, the, the polling we did recently, so the most recent poll found that 55% of people want to keep marriage to be between a man and a woman. 38% were in favour of changing it. That, that's the polling you find if you ask objective questions. 77,000 responses have gone into the consultation. That's the biggest poll that we've, we've, anyone has done. And what we're hearing is that two-thirds of those were opposed to any change. So I think the, the, the populace uh, are, are in favour of protecting marriage. But, but I think the deeper thing, Tom, Tom is right that we have to consider all, both sides of the argument. And what we're not considering is the implications this will have in, in freedoms. Isn't, as it, isn't it an issue of agencies. quality and fairness, though, John? Equ yeah, absolutely. So we need fairness for, for people who want to pr protect their conscience, protect their organisations, to be able to hold their own values. We warned at the time when they were changing adoption laws that the quality framework would not allow Catholic adoption agencies to continue. We were told at the time that that was scaremongering, and as soon as that bill was passed, we found that Catholic uh, adoption agencies across the UK were closed down. It's the same law that will apply here, and that's why it's so dangerous. And I think, that you, Tom, you, you need to concede that that is the case Look, that Tom I, we appreciate here. John's concerns and that's why we have said throughout this we don't want to require any religious body to do it that doesn't want to do it. Um, I think it's right that bodies like the Unitarians and the Quakers who want to conduct same-sex marriage are allowed to. 
if there needs to be some kind of small amendment to uh, the Equality Act to make it absolutely clear that no religious body should be required to do this, we're happy for that to be the case. But is that not enough of an assurance for you, John? What, what well, bothers Tom, you? Tom, is side, Tom you, you are sidestepping the issue. The issue is not just what absolutely. we do within the four walls of a church. It's about what people in society do. If you work for the public sector, you will be required to, to promote... Uh, equality as it's understood by the state. So as soon as the state says that marriage is between two men, it's just the same as between a man and a woman, as soon as they say that, you are under a duty to promote that. Now that means that Catholics, no. Muslims, other Christians, and people of no faith who think that marriage is between a man and a woman, they will be forced to uphold that in their work or their jobs will be at stake. John, what you do in your church is up to you, but I believe like the National um, Association for the Advancement of Coloured People, one of the major civil rights uh, organisations in the United States said, this is the civil rights issue of this generation. Um, and I believe that equality under the law is a really key but, value, but is, and that's it, what we're asking for. But do you not have <clears throat> equality under the law? Because the, the, the rights of a civil partnership are the same as, as a marriage. Uh, marriage is defined as a, you know, a, a union of between a man and a woman. You, you know, gay rights are not being abused. I think what we got with civil partnerships was some of the same legal rights, but we didn't get practical equality. And the Equality Network said at the time, look, this is a step we'll support because we see it as a step forward, but actually civil partnerships is not equality. Creating a separate institution, especially for gay people, is not equality by its very definition. What we want is equal marriage. It's not about forcing people, but it's about freedom of choice and it's about equality. I think you started to reveal the nub of the problem because what Tom is saying is that people who disagree with his understanding of human relationships are bigots. That's, that's the parallel that they've consistently done. He's comparing us with racists. So what you want, Tom, is everyone in society is free to uh, accept your understanding of human sexuality, but if they have a, a Christian or a traditional understanding of it, so it's not just Christians, throughout history, across cultures, if you have that understanding, it's unacceptable. Tom, very briefly. It's about the positive case for equality, and we hope that the Scottish Government will think carefully and send out a strong message to society that it believes in equality and is willing to stand up for it. Tom, John, thanks so much indeed for Thank joining you. us. Well, to analyse where we now find ourselves in this contentious debate, we're joined from Edinburgh by Radio Forth and Radio Clyde's political editor, Colin Mackay. Colin, thanks for joining us this evening. Uh, the government's come under attack today for this uh, delay. The opposition's accused them of weak leadership. Fair comment? I'm not convinced there is weak leadership. I think we had expected a decision today, and a lot of people are going to be disappointed by that, but by the fact that we don't actually have a final decision. But my understanding is that the Cabinet today agreed in principle that they would back same-sex marriages, and that by the end of the month, we will actually know that. They will, they will, the, the, the Deputy First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, after she has led this, this subcommittee review, will actually tell us that. But what she's trying to do is, is reassure someone like John Deegan and some of the comments that he was making earlier on in terms of the, their opt-out for gay marriages so they don't have to, to carry them out in, in Catholic churches and other churches as well if they don't want to. But more importantly, to some degree, that they, they won't be, be forced to, to promote this, for example, in Catholic schools. I suppose the problem for the government is that they can't please everyone. They can't, you can't please all the people all the time, but on this one, they're going to disappoint an awful lot of people when, when they actually come out and tell us their decision. And I, I think, you know, I don't think they're just trying to delay that. I think they're actually trying to get it right. And that's why this Cabinet subcommittee with Nicola Sturgeon, the Education Secretary, the Justice Secretary and the Lord Advocate are trying to, to deal with the legal side of this to make sure that this, this isn't open to legal challenge and also to address another of John's points. They're also in talks at the moment with Westminster officials to make sure there's no avenue there for, for legal challenge. There seems to be a, a lot of support for the same-sex marriage. Is that a sign of how much our society has changed over the past decade, given the controversy there was about the abolition of uh, Section 28? I think these are two different but related subjects. I think we have moved on a lot since Section 20. I think politically in the Parliament we've moved on. I mean, that was just about a year after the start of the Parliament. And you had fairly significant opposition. You know, you had the, the Tories who unanimously voted against the repeal of Section 20. You're not going to get that because they've changed as a party. I think things have changed quite a lot. And I think we're, we're going to see that in the fact that there will be very little opposition within the Parliament to this. Has the, the power of the church lessened over, over time, do you think? 
I think that, that remains to be seen. I think the church still has a bit of clout, a fair bit of influence, particularly on this kind of matter. I think they have influence over individual MSPs. I think they have influence over individual ministers. And I think, you know, that, that is being brought to bear. That's why the government are so keen to try and get these legal problems ironed out. Colin Mackay, thanks for joining us in Scotland tonight.